Okay, so today we're gonna go over the trap bar deadlift. This is because I get a lot of questions about it because it has a reputation as being the best deadlift variation for athletes and uh, being better than the barbell for most people, etc., etc. There's reasons why these statements are made, but the point of this lecture is to quickly go over why those statements are made so you have the context and information uh, to make informed decisions. A lot of people like to just make these blanket statements and just claim trap bar is better for athletes. If you're an athlete, you should use the trap bar instead of deadlift. Everything is contextual. There, I don't. The reason I write not necessarily benefits up here and I put properties is because every tool, everything in life has properties and descriptive traits about it. And then whether it's a benefit or not of a benefit is contextual. And so what I'm trying to do in this whole channel and all my social media is educate you guys so you can understand context and you can have an understanding of what makes something different so you can make informed, strategic, and tactical decisions that benefit you so you can get strong and explosive as well instead of just making a blanket statement and just throw something at the wall and see what sticks. That has a place in life, but we're trying to make the smartest strategic decisions possible by using context through educated decisions. So that's what this is going to be about. We're going to specifically cover the trap bar deadlift today because I get so many questions about it. So what makes the trap bar deadlift different from a barbell deadlift? Um, I'm sure you guys know what a trap bar looks like. If you don't know, then just Google trap bar or hex bar and look it up online. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's really the mechanics that make it unique here. It's not necessarily that it just looks different. So with a barbell deadlift, it's a straight bar, you know, as we've all seen. So you actually have to keep that bar in front of you. You can't stand in the middle of it. It needs to be in front of your shins, in front of your knees, in front of your hips, the entire movement. This places some constraints on the movement. This isn't a bad thing. I just want to note, but it places some constraints on the movement. With a trap bar, you have the freedom to move within the center of mass because there's an open space in the middle of the center of the weight on the bar. So you can stand in this position where the bar, see this, this is the person's foot, shin, uh, femur, and then back, and that's their head. Just the general description here, uh, descriptive drawing. And uh, here you can see the person's shin goes right through the center of mass and comes in front. And they can stand a little bit more upright. Now there's variability, which we're gonna cover, but um, in how you can stand, but generally speaking, people are gonna look like this when they trap bar deadlift. This is mechanically a little bit different than this. This, you'll notice, is a little more upright and this is a little bit more bent over. This is because you can stand in the middle of it and this becomes slightly squattier. It becomes a little bit more knee and hip. Uh, there's a little bit more of a knee flex to it and a little bit less of a hip flex to it. So that's why people describe the trap bar as being halfway between a deadlift and a squat, at least with a barbell. That's not necessarily actually true, but I don't want this to get too complicated. So we'll go over in depth on a, on a different day, a different post. But there's variability in the trap bar. This is what you can do is not only can you stand like this, but you can actually manipulate. This is one thing, one property, the main property about the trap bar is you can manipulate the angles you pull from because you have that freedom of movement. So you can deliberately in this position, turn it into a knee focused squat focused movement by pushing your knees forward and standing more upright. You have that option because you don't have any metal in your way, but you can also choose deliberately to push your hips back and keep your knees behind your arms. Your knee comes in front of your arm here. Your knee comes behind your arm here. Make it more of a hip back and hinge focused movement. So that's one thing. One element that makes the trap bar cool is you have variability. Um, we're going to get into the pros and cons of that, but you have, a, you have a lot of options in how you set up the exercise. And that's just in terms of the, the deadlift. That's just in terms of the trap bar deadlift. There's many other exercises that it can be used for. However, this is the most popular one. There's also an element where it has high and low handles. I didn't draw these here, but if you've seen a trap bar before, you'll see that there's a handle that comes up further higher than where the weights are that you can grab to shorten the range of motion. And there's also, if you flip it around, uh, you can grab the low end of the handles. So you can actually make this more upright by standing taller because your hands don't have to come as low. Or you can lower it by bringing your hands lower because there's two different grips you can use, high and low. This also, we're going to cover some details on that. First off, typically what the trap bar gets, supposedly, let's get into the main things that people talk about why it's good. 
Typically people say one, it's easy to use. This is kind of true. It Because of the variability in the movement, there's actually less that can go wrong, apparently, uh, because you can just kind of grab it and stand up with it and you've successfully executed a trap bar deadlift. But here's the thing. You've successfully executed a trap bar deadlift of sorts, right? You don't necessarily target the exact same things. If you w were using it in the context of an entire program to become more of a hinge focused movement, but you're standing like the noob, this brand new beginner trainer is standing like this, then they're not training this as effectively. And you need as a coach or an athlete yourself need to be aware of this. When you have a barbell, you don't necessarily have those those movement options you don't have that freedom of movement so you actually have to set up similar to this you have to be more consistent the variability of the trap bar again it's just a property gives you a lot of options but if you're a beginner you could be using higher low handles as well which makes it even more confusing for a beginner you have all these options which also means you could be potentially inconsistent so that's really my issue with people claiming it's all around better that's one of them um, but I need to get that out of the way because right off the bat, understand that not all trap bar deadlifts are the same and just telling some dude, Oh, just do this, do whatever. They're not necessarily doing the same thing. Most barbell deadlifts look more similar and not all barbell deadlifts are the same, depending on your anthropometry and whatnot, your joint angles, your anthropometry, your, um, your, uh, limb length. That's all going to play a major role in not only in how effective certain exercises are for you, but how much volume you can tolerate and how you're going to execute them. So different tools for different fools. Benefits and properties, generally speaking, we'll go over real quick. Less axial load right off the bat as these are all heuristics, but less axial load is an option because you don't have to bend over as much. You can stand more upright and put less stress on your lower back. Less stress on your lower back, again, isn't necessarily a bad, is it necessarily a good or bad thing. You might want the stress on your low back. If you want to stress and get stronger in the posterior chain, then you want that stress because it'll make you stronger, correct? But let's say in terms of an athlete, you're also playing football five days a week. You're also wrestling five, six days a week on top of your strength training. Maybe you make an informed decision and say, look, I want the strength stimulus of hinging and pulling something off the floor, but I probably can't handle barbell deadlifts because it's too stressful for me at this point in my programming. So it might be a smarter decision in some cases to go with the trap bar in some cases, but keep in mind, everything is contextual. So it doesn't necessarily mean less axial load. Therefore it's better for the athlete. That athlete might benefit more from a barbell. You know, it, it always depends, but you have the option of pulling from the floor in a hinge focused movement with less spinal load and your axial load. That's what that means. Your axial load is the amount of stress you put on your low back usually. And uh, there's only so much you can take just like anything else before you become, it needs to recover like anything else before you become uh, overtrained. So it's not that putting stress on your back is bad for your health. It's that you want to put the right amount without overtraining you over time. As you stress the spine, it will actually adapt and get stronger. But if you push it too far too soon, then you get these injuries and no one wants that. But uh, don't think of axial load as a bad thing. Stressing the low back is a bad thing. You want a strong low back. This gives you an option of variability to manipulate how much stress you can handle in your current training program. Another thing that the trap bar does very well is it focuses on the short range of a squat or hinge movement. And if you don't know what that is, go on my sub stack and read my tension range essays. I go over all of that. I'm not going to go over all of that here, but it basically goes over the top range. The, it's not something you're going to get a lot of bend, full knee bend. It's not a long range movement. You're not going to get a stretch from trap bar deadlifts. You're not going to get a full knee bend, full ankle bend, full bend at the hip from that at all. You're not even really going to get that from a barbell deadlift, to be fair. But you're going to get even less of that typically from a trap bar deadlift. So, but what that means is because you're not doing that, it means it's very effective at overloading the top end range. And this is one of the reasons why typically people enjoy it for athletes is because it's good at working those ranges that you're typically going to use in sport. However, we're going to talk about why that's not necessarily the best thing in the world always, depending on the athlete. Because as a general structural development in terms of building muscle and tendon uh, baselines that you need, a developing athlete, especially if they're young, 
do not necessarily want to focus only on short range movements. You want to do a lot of long range movements to build the muscle and the connective tissue strength that you need in order to have in order to have potential at the highest level. You need to build your hardware. Trap bar is probably not going to be always the best, at least the trap bar deadlift uh, traditionally performed is not going to be the best tool for developing an athlete physically. It's really good at peaking your strength and power in the top range. It's a neural focused exercise in my opinion and most of what I use it for is neural drive. It's very good at taking your neural strength or your explosive strength depending on how you load it in rep schemes and application but it's a great tool for taking the strength that you have and peaking it further so you can be more explosive. But if you don't have the prerequisite baseline strength, baseline musculature, and baseline uh, connective tissue and tendon strength, then you're peaking something that doesn't really have a high potential peak in the first place. So it's really good for driving neural gains, but not quite as good in my opinion for building a base. So when you see a lot of high school athletes, they get obsessed with doing the trap bar because it's easy. They don't have to learn how to deadlift and learn how to focus on form. They can load up a bunch of weight because they want to ego lift and lift something heavy. They, that's why they like to use the high handles. Uh, they lift through a short range of motion. They can lift all this weight. They can show off. They feel like they're being productive, even though they're not being quite as productive as they could be. And they lift a lot of weight that would impress another 17 year old athlete, but not a true elite athlete. And, uh, and they actually lose out on the development that they needed in order to have a high peak within five years, 10 years. So we're going to get a little further into all of this. So variability. One thing about the trap bar that we talked about is you have a lot of variability in both the joint angles, but also the range of motion. You can actually manipulate the range of motion very easily because it's very safe to fail on a trap bar deadlift. It's very safe to fail because you can, for example, on a squat, if you fail on a squat, you need a spotter. How are you going to bail out of the lift? You might need pins, but if you fail on a trap bar, you can just drop it right on a deadlift with a barbell. If you drop it, you might smash your knees. You know, it, it can land on you depending on how you fail on it. But the trap bar, it's nothing's ever in the way of your body. So anytime you load it up really heavy to peak your strength and power, and let's say you fail on a repetition, you can't lift it, or you got to drop it, you just let it go. And there's no danger. It's very safe. That's why I think it's really good for a lot of people. That's one thing that I like is you have the option to uh, push hard and it's very safe to use um, in terms of making mistakes, right? The range of motion is easy to modify. And where this really comes in handy is that sometimes I think when you're overloading the top range uh, and peaking your short range movement and strength and power, we use things like half squats and quarter squats all the time. It's very common in athletics if you want to get strong in those joint angles. Um, but one, dis, uh, one downside is it's extremely, extremely heavy. Um, and that can actually cause a lot of axial load uh, in terms of the athlete. Sometimes you're peaking their knee extension strength or their hip extension strength, but stressing their lower back so much that it doesn't become worth it. In a lot of cases, the trap bar does make it worth it because you can manipulate the range of motion by putting the trap bar on blocks and therefore making it even shorter range if you want to, but you, the weight that you're adding onto it is now not sitting on your low back uh, and on the, or on the top of your back. Is, uh, it's not sitting on the top of your back and stressing you as much. It's a little bit easier to get that weight on you, have it be safe and have it be a worthwhile trade-off for you to load up that short range quarter squat or half squat position, uh, uh, you know, a trap bar deadlift, if you set it up right, is essentially a half squat. You can use it to overload those angles and get strong and explosive in the areas you need uh, for sprinting, running, jumping, tackling, and wrestling without as much stress and without as much risk for the athlete, especially because you're not competing in that lift. You're using that lift to make you better on the field, on the mat. Um, you don't necessarily want to screw up. If a powerlifter hurts himself in the gym, that's obviously terrible, but they are actually competing specifically. That's It's practice for them, right? So one thing about the variability as well is the high and low handles. And we're going to talk into some things about that. I somewhat, these are all just properties, but some things I prefer it less for. Um, the trap bar deadlift, you have the option of the high and low handles, which also can help you manipulate range of motion very easily. Typically... The high handles shorten the range of motion and make it a short range exercise and will overload the top range neurologically, which is good for getting explosive, provided you have the, the prerequisite hardware potential to get explosive. 
but that also means it's going to produce less muscle growth. It's going to produce less tendon adaptations. You're going to get less structural development out of that. And people love to use the high handles because it's easier and you can lift heavy and you feel good. The low handles, in my opinion, you can't lift as much. It makes it more similar to a barbell deadlift, i.e. that's why I'm saying the barbell deadlift is not the demon that people make it out to be. It is probably actually a better developer for new athletes, for younger athletes that don't have the muscle and strength that they need in order to peak high enough. It's probably better in a lot of cases than a trap bar. Everything's context, but a lot of teenagers love to use the trap bar, like I said. They use the high handles when really they should be at the very least, if they're not using this, they should be using the low handles because the low handles add more range of motion and it's gonna give you a little bit more structural uh, development and hypertrophy. This is really important for someone that's young and undeveloped. So in my, for some context for you, typically most of you should be using the low handles. You might get excited about using the high handles, but you should really be using the low handles unless you're already pretty jacked and explosive. High handles are for peaking in my opinion. Less preferred for that reason, like I said, hypertrophy. Trap bar deadlift's probably not gonna build as much muscle and strength, tendon structure as a regular deadlift, or even, to be honest, I wouldn't even choose either of those for general development. I would just use deep range of motion squats and RDLs, stiff leg deadlifts. But you can peak with them. So I would use less trap bar if you're new, more RDLs, stiff leg deadlifts, etc., and squats. And then as you get more advanced, you can play with the trap bar a little bit more. As you get closer to your season, you can use the trap bar a little bit more. As you get closer to your event, you can use the trap bar a little bit more. If you don't have a season and you're just trying to generally develop, cycle them, in my opinion. Um, cycle them with a focus on one or the other. Do the if you're For most of you, you're not that developed. So you should be focusing on your RDL and stiff leg deadlifts for you know two-thirds of the year and maybe trap bar one-third of the year. Or three-quarters to one-quarter, probably. Um one place where I mentioned this prior, but one place where it can fail is the variability that gives it so much potential is also a downside. If someone does not have the body control to understand their start position, because you have that variability, the barbell with its restrictions, you pretty much have to get similar to this um, setup every single time. But with the trap bar, because you have the variability, you can stand here, you can stand like this, you can stand like that. Many people have a different start position every, not only every set, but every repetition they perform. You might start with a squatty position like this, and that's what you're training. You're training a more upright um, pull from the floor. And then as the set gets harder, you turn it into this, into a hinge. Well, how do we know if you failed then? How do we know if you properly overloaded this? Did you overload this too far? Did you overshoot your RPE? Because you no longer could handle this anymore. Maybe you hit failure on this movement, and turned it into this movement mid-set, little by little, and we didn't even notice, right? So these are issues with someone with that does not know how to keep their form consistent, does not have a good coach watching them, keeping them honest, and does not understand and have good body control. And again, that's why it's like, it's easy for a beginner to just hop on the trap bar and start yanking it off the ground. True, easier than a barbell, absolutely. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're performing the exercise that was designated as, as effectively as we need it to be. You know, because the variability is there, it actually means there's a lot of mistakes you can make as well. Uh, and lastly, I want to say just real quick, if you're an athlete, this is all variability. This is all an option for you, but it is not really that useful for power lifters. If you are a lifter and you care about your barbell deadlift and you want to lift weight like that, then one, I don't really think it's impressive. People generally aren't impressed by lifting a lot of weight on the trap bar because of the way it's set up. It is set up to peak strength and power. That's what it's useful for. So you're kind of lifting it, automatically lifting a lot of weight. You're at your best joint angles to produce the most force. That's good if you're tra training to produce the most force, but it's not impressive. If you're a lifter and you're lifting for impressive numbers, you're a power lifter. It's not a good accessory movement for the big three. And it's really not going to transfer very well over to the barbell deadlift. In fact, the barbell deadlift probably will transfer more to the trap bar than vice versa. So if you're really interested in squat bench deadlift, it's really not um, a great tool, in my opinion, most of the time. You could throw it in for variability. I'm a big believer in getting strong at every position and every angle and on different exercises. But with an informed decision here, if you do care, you're one of those people that care strictly about your barbell deadlift. Um... I wouldn't really, this wouldn't be my go-to.
Lastly, I also want to say there's a lot of unique exercises and uses for the trap bar that go beyond the trap bar deadlift. That's why I really like the trap bar itself. It's not necessarily because of the trap bar deadlift. It's because I can actually do a million other things with it. Uh, we're going to go into other unique exercises and uses for the trap bar in further lectures and videos and demonstrations that I'm going to make. But for now, I just wanted to go over the trap bar deadlift itself for you guys in so you can make a, an intelligent programming decision for yourselves with your own um with your own training so just to summarize and recap you have variability you can do a lot you can get strong in a lot of different positions with the trap bar you can overload the top range and use it as a short range exercise a mid-range exercise peak your strength and power at as long as as long as you are already hitting the prerequisite hypertrophy and the muscular and connected tissue strength uh, in order to benefit from it. At the very least, if you're using it, it should not be your only hinge or deadlift exercise. You should absolutely be going through full range of motion exercises because a trap bar simply kind of isn't in terms of joint angles. You should be doing full depth squats. You should be doing full depth, uh, long range hinges. Um, you should be training everything there through a longer range than the trap bar will ever give you. If you only focus on your hinges and your quote deadlifting, muscle development, your lower body work being a trap bar, you are eventually going to uh, stall hard and uh, you're not going to get the return that you think you were supposed to based on every stupid YouTuber's, um, you know, catchy title and big uh, fancy thumbnail about how the trap bar is so amazing. You're not going to get that out of it. Um, and uh, you really need to focus on developing your structure first. You can throw this in uh, when you want to specifically work on your explosiveness at the particular joint angles and the range of motion that you need for your sport in order to peak your strength and power before uh, events or during a certain time of the year. It's really kind of just a tool to use that kind of gives you an edge, but it's not the magical weapon that should overtake the barbell deadlift for every single athlete. That's really not what it is. The barbell deadlift's an excellent tool. Everything is a tool in context. But if you do, for example, need to have some pull from the floor that makes you a little more explosive, on top of already doing the rest of the work, RDLs, hinges, and deep squats, and you can't handle the axial load and the stress on your back from the dead barbell deadlift on top of everything else you're doing, going to wrestling practice and whatnot, then the trap bar might be a good option for you. If you do have any questions about whether it's a good idea for you, just comment below or ask me a question on Twitter. Um, you know, read my sub stack so you understand the context of all this stuff. A lot of the words that I use uh, really come from terminology that come from the other essays that I've written. Um, you should be reading all this stuff. You shouldn't just be, nothing I post is just for, um, you know, a one-off always. It usually has some type, it's all connected. It usually has some type of connection to something else I've produced. So if you want greater context or anything's confusing you, first place to look is check Substack so you can understand a few things. And the second thing is just ask me a question. I'm basically on here all day answering questions. So just ask and let me know what you thought about this. If you want to know any more, if you want a full tutorial, if you want to know any workouts to do with it, um, just let me know, comment or uh, message me. And uh, I, you know, I deliver. I deliver when people ask me things. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this and we'll talk again soon.